Hello, this is Chris Landry with a LPAC TV News update. New research has furthered the progress on the non-particle creative view of life. A paper recently published by researchers at Northeastern University and the University of Perugia titled Electromagnetic Signals from Bacterial DNA answers the most frivolous objection made against the groundbreaking work done by the scientist who won the Nobel Prize for the discovery of HIV, Luc Montagnier. Montagnier's approach to virology and biology in general violates the most basic assumptions opposed upon science today, namely that life can be reduced to the interaction of particles according to the laws of physics and chemistry. The approach by Montagnier is quite remarkable and, if pursued, could destroy many roadblocks to the progress of science. To refresh the viewer's memory, the controversy is the following. Dr. Luc Montagnier's experiments demonstrated that not only does bacteria emit extremely low-frequency electromagnetic radiation, but that that radiation can organize base nucleotides, the so-called building blocks of DNA, contained in a completely separate vessel into organized DNA strains. And even more provocative, filtered water from which the bacteria had been removed also retain the ability to organize these nucleotides. Now, this does not refute Pasteur's principle that life comes only from life. However, the question raised is, what is life such that particles do not compose life? One of the objections to Montagnier's research was that no mechanism could explain how DNA could produce a low-frequency radio signal. In the paper cited above, the researchers proposed a mechanism by which a bacteria could emit electromagnetic radiation in the radio frequency range, as Montagnier had measured in his previous experiments. In the introduction to that paper, they state that, In two recent and important experiments, it was shown that bacterial DNA macromolecules radiate electromagnetic signals which were monitored employing the voltage across an inductive pickup coil. The bacterial DNA within water was located in a test tube. The pickup coil was constructed with wires wrapped around the tube. Our purpose is to theoretically discuss the biophysical sources of these electromagnetic signals. The sources are argued to be due to electronic transitions between energy levels of electrons moving around the bacterial DNA loops. The particular mechanism discussed in this paper however, is less important than the fact that this paper has generated widespread ferment over the more profound implications of Montagnier's work, which some try to brush aside at the outset of the investigation by simply stating that there was no way that bacteria could emit radio waves. Now, as some are admitting, those who tried to brush aside Montagnier's work based on that criticism will be forced to look more deeply at his work. His experiments actually force the acknowledgement of a true paradox, since it is assumed that biological reactions are a result of molecular, that is, particle inter interactions, and in demonstrating that electromagnetic signals were being employed as a non-particle organizing principle enabled by life, Montagnier was challenging the fundamental conceptions in chemistry, physics, and biology. However, after publishing his results in 2009, the worthy pursuit of these questions was suppressed and rejected. These investigations only begin to scratch the surface on bacterial communication, leading to fundamental questions about what the study of living processes can tell us about the nature of electromagnetic radiation. For example, what kind of biological information is conveyed by the radio frequency emissions? Or how do such emissions vary from species to species? And what influence might external sources of electromagnetic radiation, including those from beyond the Earth, have on the functioning of such microorganisms. Further, is this wireless form of communication somehow related to the recently discovered ability of bacteria to form electronically conductive nanowires for apparent communication amongst themselves? It suffices to say that the only way possible that mankind can survive the current immediate galactic crisis threatening our species is to realize that the very substance of the universe that surrounds all does in fact express the very same creativity that we find in life and most importantly within ourselves. That's all we have for now. Stay tuned for the World in Review. This is Chris Landry and we'll see you later.